all that I was enduring. So I would say I allowed myself to be placed in Lodabar. I allowed my, myself to be put in the pit mentally and physically. Um, I would say around 2019, things started to change in my life and my family started to go their own way. And as my family was going their own way, I felt that there was some lack and some loss in my life because I was at this moment that I thought I was getting my life all together. I thought I was getting my health together. I thought everything about me was beginning to line up. I thought that it, I was at the verge of a new level breakthrough. Your light was on. A, a new level breakthrough and I hit a pitfall and my vision decreased. Um, I started having problems in my health. And I was like, God, I've been praying and asking you to heal me. I've been praying and asking you to restore me. But I have, I'm not experiencing that. I'm experiencing setbacks. I'm experiencing shortcomings. I'm experiencing pitfalls. And then 2020 rolled around. And I can remember hearing and everybody saying, this is the year of God's double vision. This is the year that God is going to bless us. This is the year that all things begin to manifest well i i started seeing a little a little progress but then here comes march of 2020 i went to the dentist and they told me i needed some dental work and that i had an infection in my gums so i got a prescription and so from with the prescription i thought that i was having an allergic reaction to the medicine because my breathing changed i started developing rash on my skin I was getting, my throat was sore, so I'm all alone thinking that this is what's happening to me. I'm, I'm getting, I'm allergic to this antibiotic. So then here they come and say, no, May, I mean, March 13th, COVID, they shutting everything down. So my symptoms begin to progress. So it took almost two and a half weeks before someone decided at the medical field to actually do something about it. I had been going to the doctor and the doctor switched to antibiotics and gave me something different. Never tested me for COVID. I went to the urgent care. They were telling me that it was all in my mental state that I was not experiencing what I was saying I was experiencing. It was just negative reports after negative reports. And I remember my daughter called me and she said, Put some clothes on, she said, because you can't even answer me on the phone. She said, I'm leaving work. I'm coming to bring you to the emergency room. So she brought me to the emergency room. And when she brought me there, the medical tech that came out to the door, she said, you can't come in with her. She has to go in by herself. So I said, well, you can go back to work. I say it and I'll text you when it's time for you to come and pick me up. So they did not do a full exam on me, but they said I was COVID. So I called my rheumatologist and I called my uveitis doctor and I explained to them what was going on. So my rheumatologist was highly upset that I was not admitted into the hospital because I, I didn't have any vocals. I was barely able to talk. I would say a word and then I would have to pause to get some air and it took a while and he was like, they shouldn't have never left you. They should have never let you come home. They should have admitted you to the hospital. And every week he would check up on me. I had to stop the medicine that I was taking because they didn't know if the medicine was going to harm my body with me having COVID. And I went through that phase and I can remember my rheumatologist calling one week and he said, I was checking up on you and I said, I'm still not feeling good. I said, it's, it's not getting better. I said, I don't feel that the medicine that the ER gave me is working. He said, well, come on, give it some more time for it to get into your system. And I remember him telling me, he said, they haven't released this yet. He said, they're telling people to quarantine for 14 days. He said, but I want you to quarantine for 28 days if you can or 36 days. So my quarantine time wind up being 40 days. I was, I was in the house for 40 days confined to a bed. And I can remember myself getting on my knees and saying, God, I know that you didn't bring me this far. That that is not the answer to what I'm going through. I said, 
show me a sign of why this is happening to me because for people that know me I don't go anywhere I don't come in contact with people I'm to myself I'm really during the week an introvert so I was like and I have COVID I couldn't believe it that I had gotten COVID because in order for me to catch it it had to be somebody coming around me because I, I like I said I don't go that many places so in those 40 days it was a very mental trying time because I was questioning God my faith was being shaken my continence was not at its greatest it became a hard time for me to pray and once I did decide to go out I have two rheumatologists by the way and I had an appointment in May with my second rheumatologist and when my second she's new school med I call her she pulled up my medical records and she said how are you I said well my breathing is it's shallow I said oh, I'm breathing heavy I said I still don't have all my senses back and actually it's two years now and I still cannot smell um, my smell never came back and my rheumatologist she said uh, is there anyone with you that can take you to the hospital I said why do I need to go to the hospital she said because according to your medical records from when you was diagnosed with COVID, she said it's stating on here that your lungs are full with fluid. So I need you to go to the hospital immediately. I said, well, I was not informed that I had fluid in my lungs. She said, yes, it's in your medical report and something is also wrong with your heart. I said, okay, God help me. So my sister immediately brought me to the hospital. I had the test done and maybe about five minutes from me leaving the hospital, the, she called me and she said, I want to let you know that it's a miracle that everything that was wrong is no longer there. She said the fluid that was um, laying in your lungs, she said, it's, your lungs is clear. There's no sign of any injuries to your heart. So I understand that his healing virtue took place even in the midst of me being wavered in my faith in the midst of me doubting him in the midst of me trying to figure out why am I suffering from COVID when I don't deal with, you know, I'm not going out. And I kept putting myself into low places. And as I look back now and I've been meditating on this message, I've been hearing the Lord saying, all I've been asking you to do is trust me. All I've been asking you to, to do is believe. Understand that in the due time that I'm going to restore you. I'm going to heal you. But when you're going through, you don't feel that at some point. You don't hear those words. You don't believe those words because we begin to adapt to the situation and the circumstance rather than allowing the word to work within us. And I'm learning that now that I have to allow the word to work inside of me. I have to allow the word to continue to cultivate me, to continue to groom me and not allow the circumstance or my ailment to define my fate level. And I, I put myself mentally there because I had so much going on. And after COVID, it seemed as though I was hitting battles after battles after battles and I was beginning to have problems with my liver and I was going back and forth to the doctor. They were testing me. I was having liver ultrasounds. I was having liver biopsies. I was just going through so much and I'm, I'm saying, God, how much longer? God, when will I walk through the doors of my breakthrough? When will I see a better day for myself? So I want to encourage somebody that has gone through or is going through what I'm facing and what I was facing that allow him to minister to you even in the midst of your brokenness. Allow him to minister to you even in the midst of your trials, even in the midst of your storm because 
now I understand that he says greater works. And um, on Sunday at church, I was reminded that my inflictions is for his glory. My hardship was for his glory. The struggles that I face is for his glory to be revealed in my life. It's for the testimony to help somebody else. It's for the birthing of somebody that's connected to me that has lost their trust, has lost their faith. And we have to understand that when we're going through, we don't, we don't really know why we're going through at that moment. But we're going through because it's for us to help the next person. How can we ever evangelize? How can we ever share with someone if we don't go through the test, if we don't go through the trial? But I want you to understand that there's victory at the end of every trial. There's victory at the end of every storm. The sun is going to shine. It may look like it's cloudy right now. It may look like it's storming. It may look like it's raining. It may look like you're being flooded in. But I just want you to understand tonight to trust God with all your heart. Allow him to minister to you. Allow him to fill you up by his spirit. Allow the trust that he wants you to have. And I, I see myself now. I, I feel myself feeling better. I, I, I have a greater faith in myself. I have greater faith and confidence that I'm going to win. I'm, I'm no longer feeling defeated. I'm no longer feeling that I'm damaged. I'm no longer feeling that I'm not worthy of the blessing. Because at some time I, I thought that. I wasn't worthy for God to heal me. I wasn't worthy for God to bring me through because it was like I was just put here to go through storms after storms after storms. But I understand now it's for me to get here and tell you that you can succeed. You will succeed. You can birth. You can dream. You can fulfill the promise that there's a destiny on your life, that there's purpose on your life. We just have to remember to stay committed. We have to stay focused, stay stay at this, stay, stay in the place and the posture that God is calling you in. And this month, I've decided that I'm going to seek God even the more. I'm going to hunger and thirst more for him. I, I want to go deeper. I want to feel all that there is to feel in his presence. I, I, I just want to tap in. To that next realm in God. I want to be able to come out whole. I want to be able to come out healed in this hour. I want to be able to see 2020 again. I want to be able to see with clear vision. I want to be able to see myself healthy. I want to be able to understand that though I went through it, but I'm coming out in prosperous health. I'm coming out in good health. I'm coming out with the healing anointing. I'm coming out with the virtue that God has for me. It's going to be restored. That's going to be power. I don't have to continue to beat myself down because God said I'm a, I'm a builder up. He said he's going to build us up. In, he's going to build you up where you are weak. He's going to build you up where you're feeling low. He's going to build you up when you're feeling doubtful. He's going to build you up. As you trust him, as you grow in faith, as you begin to, ah, uh, yes, Lord, I hear you. <laughs> as you begin to change, I heard the word change. As you begin to change, hey, <laughs> God, as you begin to transform, he's transforming us. He's changing us into the men and women of God that he want us to be. He's taking us to a new place. Ah, thank you, Lord God. That after the storm, the victory, the new path, the new levels, the new blessings. We thank you tonight, Lord God, for your latter day rain that is upon us. We thank you, Lord God, for your blood covenant that is upon our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for sealing. We thank you for the promise that you have made to us, which is so wonderful that you never leave us nor you forsake us. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, even when we think that there's too much for us to handle. You said if we begin to trust you and cast our cares upon you, you'll give us sweet rest. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, that once we were going through weary nights, but now we got the peaceful rest that we desire. So we thank you, Lord God, for peace in our spirit, peace in our soul, peace in our mind. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the power of restoration that is upon us. We thank you tonight, Lord God, for new beginnings. I don't know why, but all day today I've been hearing the Lord been telling me that I need to close some chapters. There are some chapters that I left unwritten. <coughs> God bless you. There's some chapters that I didn't put a period at the end so that I and I started a new one. I left chapter 12 to come to chapter 13. So I, I have to close some chapters in my life as I move forward. So I've been working on closing, <laughs> girl, bless you, girl. I've been working on closing some chapters in my life. Things that I thought I needed to hold on to. So I realized that I have to let go of some things so that God can fully move in me and through me. I have to let go of some people that's been holding on and holding me down. I have to let go of some circumstances that I thought I needed in my life. And God is saying, no, I don't want you in bondage anymore. I don't want you to carry what's not meant for you to carry. I want you to be free in this season. I want you to be able to spread your wings. And I want you to be able to go where you desire to go. I want you to be able to be going in the places that is being led to you by the Spirit of the Lord. That's what I've been reminding of today. That, oh God, it may tarry. It may have been some doors that were shut, but God is telling me that now is my time. Now is your time. It, it, it's our appointed hour that he's ready to bless us. The opportunity is here for us to let go of our baggage, to let go of our hindrance, to let go any animosity, any unforgiveness, any strife, any bitterness. I, I have just been hearing the heart of a worshiper this is our hour to be free. This is our hour that we can dance. I can't dance in the earth room, but Lord Jesus, when the anointing of God falls upon me and a good worship song comes on, to dance my spirit. And I, I just feel that in, in this season of my life. I feel that my joy is being restored back to me. And I thank God for restoring your joy giving you unconditional joy. Thank you, Lord God, for the watering of my seeds. It's raining, y'all. So he's watering my seeds that I've planted. I thank him for the harvest that's coming because my seed has been planted in the ground on good soil. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for multiplying our seeds for tonight. I don't know why, but as I hear the rain falling, I hear our seeds being multiplied. The seeds that we sowed, financial seeds, seeds of goodness in somebody's life, seeds of change, seeds of words, seeds of faith. Any seed that you planted, the Lord is watering it tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for the increase of our seeds. We thank you tonight, Lord God, for the abundance. We thank you, Lord God, for the overflow. We thank you, Lord God, for this time of fellowship. I thank you, Lord God, for every person that is on the line watching live. I thank you, Lord God, for every person that is going to watch the replay. I pray that something that I said, God, minister to the heart of your people, Lord God, that I don't want to come on here, God, and speak anything that you have not given me. I just want to share who I am and where I've been at, and I just want to help somebody that may have been lost, may have been going through a trying time, and they feel that there's no hope. But there is a good day. There is a better day. There is a blessed day. There is a day that you're going to walk and live in the overflow, in the goodness of God. Because he reminds us in Psalms 23 that goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And then he reminds us in Ephesians 3 and 20, abundance and overflow. So we thank him as we begin to seek him even the more. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this transformation that's taking place. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for every heart that you are ministering to tonight, God. I thank you for every spoken word, Lord God, of blessings over our lives. We thank you, Lord God, that we continue to decree and declare a Deuteronomy blessings over our lives, that we are above and not beneath. We are the head and not the tail, that we are the lender and not the borrower, that we are blessed going out and blessed coming in. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for covering those tonight on the highways and the byway, Lord God. We thank you for dispatching your angels tonight, Lord God, to cover them on the highway, Lord God. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your spirit is going into the hospitals, that your spirit is going into the schoolhouse, Lord God, to bring back the prayer in the schoolhouse, Lord God. Bring back the... <laughs> Hey, God, the warriors in the schoolhouse, God. We thank you for the warring angels, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for every gap stander, every intercessor, Lord God. We cover all the leaders across this nation tonight, Lord God. We ask you, God, to continue to pour out your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding upon them and us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for every receiving heart tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're about to do in this hour in our lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus, as we start a new month, God, that you're going to begin to show us the way that you desire for us to go. We thank you for ordering our steps. We thank you for making the crooked road straight for us tonight, Lord God. We thank you that you are the way maker. You are the promise keeper. We thank you, Lord God, for the light that shines out of darkness. We thank you tonight, Lord God, for the unity. We thank you for the corporate connections that we are making, Lord God. We thank you once again, Lord God, for the open doors. We thank you, Lord God, for the new opportunities that is coming, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God for the finances that's coming to our homes, Lord God. We thank you for the new jobs, Lord God. We thank you that somebody's going to actually find a job, Lord God, because we know that many people have been unemployed due to whatever the circumstances, Lord God. So we speak jobs to them, Lord God. We speak increase, Lord God. We speak financial blessings to their homes and households, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for covering our children this summer while they're off from school, Lord God. We ask you to continue to cover those, Lord God, in secondary education, Lord God. We ask you to cover those that is in college, trade school, God, wherever they may be, Lord God. Allow them to receive the education and the learning that they need, Lord God, to start the next level of their lives, Lord God. We thank you for covering, God, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, Lord God, the laborers, the servants, Lord God, for touching like never before, Lord God. Thank you for your strength upon the land, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the covenant blessing that you have made with us, Lord God, that you shall supply all our needs, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the steadfast anointing, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your virtue, God. We thank you for your power. We thank you for the dominion and authority. We thank you, Lord God, that the chapters that we didn't end, God, is now being closed, Lord God. So there shall be no hindrance as we go forth in your will, Lord God. We thank you tonight, Lord God, for the shares. We thank you for the light. We thank you for the comments, Lord God that's there for us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your words of wisdom, your words of encouragement, your words of motivation. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for sharing. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for breaking the foul grounds that is around us. We thank you, Lord God, for your peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you, Lord God, for the shield of faith. We thank you for your grace and your favor. We thank you for the mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for every midnight experience, Lord God. We thank you for bringing us through in this hour, Lord God. And remember that your tests and your trials are but for a moment. But God is there with you even when you don't feel him. He's there. Get your strength back. Get your hope back. Fall back in love. I know it may be difficult, but all you want us to do is lay it at the altar. All you want us to do is cast our cares upon him. All you want us to do is receive, believe, and trust. And then he said, ask, seek, and knock, and it shall be given to you. So I thank you tonight for coming on live. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're about to do in this hour. I keep on hearing it. Thank you for moving among us. Thank you for the blessings that you have put in our lives. Thank you for daily you have loaded us with benefits, spiritually and earthly, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the building in this hour. May God's blessing be with you. In Jesus' name, amen.